seated. In the name of God, the all-merciful, the mercy-giving, if you are able and if you are willing, please join me in prayer to open this commencement ceremony. O most merciful and mercy-giving God, O sustainer of the heavens and the earth and knower of all that lies within them, O creator of life and death, O source and strength of, fort, uh, of, fort, of source of strength and fortitude, O giver of peace and security and healing, send down your blessings as we commend those here today who heard and answered the calling to serve the health and well-being of their fellow man. We thank you for the overflowing blessings of life and health. We cherish, too, those in our lives, family, friends, supporters, who are present here today to honor the accomplishments of their loved ones. And we cherish as well those who are absent, whether by death or by distance or by other circumstance, yet who are kept near in heart by love. We honor those who made our paths smoother and perhaps even at times a little harder. We honor them all because we love them, and moreover because they love us, and we show our love by celebrating this day with joy and gratitude. We ask you, O compassionate God, just as you have granted the students here the strength and perseverance to arrive at this day, so too grant that they may be and continue to be true to the noblest of convictions, always with courage and compassion, that their hands and their minds may be a source of healing that leaves no sickness, that they may continue throughout humbly to learn and to grow, and thus that they may be a blessing to their patients, to their teachers and one day their students, to their families, to their communities, and to all the world. This we ask of you, the all-wise, the ever-living. Amen. All right, good morning, everyone. It is truly a joy to be with you today on this most august of occasions. For those that may not know me, my name is Mukesh Jain, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as Dean of Medicine and Biological Sciences and Senior Vice President for Health Affairs at Brown. I want to begin by first extending a warm welcome to parents, family, children, members, alumni, faculty, friends, who've traveled from near and far to be part of this important milestone. Collectively, you have inspired, encouraged, supported today's graduates for decades, which has culminated in this most momentous of occasions. So congratulations to all of you. And of course, a hearty congratulations to all of our 2023 graduates gathered here today. We are so thrilled for each and every one of you. Over your medical school career, you have persevered experience just how vital your work in medicine is, both to individuals and to a community. Your diligent efforts and commitment to excellence in the midst of these especially challenging circumstances 
has resulted in this richly deserved achievement that we gather to celebrate today. We are so very proud of you. Today's medical graduation ceremony also marks the closing of our over a year long celebration of 50 years of medicine at Brown University. A little over half a century ago, the school was established in partnership with the state to affect the quality of care available to Rhode Islanders. This was an inspired decision. Today, we not only have a physician workforce in our local hospitals, community-based clinics, and in private practices in the state affiliated with Brown and the Warren Alpert Medical School, we have Warren Alpert Medical graduates represented nationally and internationally. Yet we know that when we talk about the impact of the last 50 years, we're really talking about the people, the individuals, like all of you who've worked hard and tackled the often daunting path to becoming a doctor, and who went on to make a difference through their lives and careers. People like Arthur Horwich, class 1975, a member of the first medical school class who would go on to discover the machinery in our cells that allows our proteins to fold and function properly. Studies that have absolutely changed the face of science and medicine and resulted in Dr. Horwich receiving amongst many honors the American Albert, excuse me, Albert Lasker Award for Basic Science, also known as the American Nobel. Marlene Kutatar, MD, class 1986. Dr. Kutatar completed the general surgery residency program at Brown in 1992, where she was one of three women who served as the chief surgical resident that year. She was at the vanguard of a growing cadre of women entering surgical specialties and was a staunch advocate and mentor for women in medicine throughout their careers. Maya Minter Jordan. Dr. Minter Jordan serves as President and CEO of CareQuest Institute for Oral Health. In 2020, Dr. Minter Jordan joined 18 other black and brown executives in Massachusetts as a founding leader of the new Commonwealth Racial Equity and Social Justice Fund to provide philanthropic support to community groups and coalitions fighting systemic racism and, and racial inequality. These individuals make clear that whatever your path, whether it be direct patient care, bench to bedside research, public policy, education, or population health, you are poised for the weighty responsibility and tremendous privilege to have impact. As we sit here today in reflection, we imagine with great confidence and anticipation what your impact will be in the next 5, 10, and 50 years. It's really important to appreciate what a privilege it is to bear the identity of a physician. It is in my view, distinct from anything else. But with privilege comes enormous responsibility. The responsibility to impact humanity for social good, be it at the level of the individual patient, community, or society as a whole. Today is truly a seminal moment. For by day's end, you will have willfully crossed the proverbial Rubicon and your identity forever altered as a consequence. This identity, that of a doctor, will accompany you for the entirety of your life. I pause because it's really important to appreciate this, really allow it to soak in and reflect on the moment. It will impact how society views you, whether it be family, friends, patients, colleagues, or complete strangers. And there's also something quite distinct about this role, this identity. Bear in mind that our discipline is virtually unique in that the individuals we work most closely with, our patients, 
prefer to be doing anything else than spending time with us. <laughs> but they're compelled by illness to withstand by virtue of your identity and white coat, your questioning of sensitive topics, your poking and prodding, your recommendations that often involve painful procedures and less than pleasant medications. I emphasize this to underscore perhaps the most important thing to remember in your practice, to uphold and never shortchange an individual's humanity. In the course of your evaluation, spend time learning about the individual beyond the illness, where they live, grew up, hobbies, professions, sources of joy. You will gain a deep connection that will make an enormous impact on the patient experience. You will also quickly come to appreciate that you will have many external pressures impacting your efforts. Keep in mind that no matter how challenged you feel, no matter how tired you are, you are not the one in the hospital gown. You're not the one in the hospital bed. And patients do not place their trust in machines, devices, or institutions. They place their trust in you. It is this engagement that defines you. This is your responsibility and your chance potentially your only chance to impact that individual's life. One of the other fabulous aspects of being in medicine, which I really did not appreciate un until I was graduating from medical school, is that while you have an, es an established core identity, there is an inherent flexibility to grow in diverse ways throughout the course of your career. Consequently, there are additional avenues for you to have impact. Some of you may choose to engage in research along with clinical care. Others may extend their professional purview to engage in medical education, business, law, drug development in the pharmaceutical industry, to name a few. These are all worthy, noble pursuits. This was very important in my career, for as I became more facile with patient care, I also began to appreciate that despite the enormous advances in biology and technology, there was often uncertainty regarding how best to treat someone. There are many gaps in our knowledge, and I undertook efforts to address some of those gaps. Do not ignore such opportunities. Stay curious, and with a little bit of work and hard luck, you may have the opportunity to impact standard of care in addition to delivery of care through the application of the scientific method. Another important aspect of a career in medicine is the ability to collaborate, to work as part of a team to exact bold change. We have a lot of amazing people in medicine, and it's remarkable what a group of bright, dedicated individuals connected by a common purpose can achieve. I'd like to close with following thoughts. Your generation of physicians, like many before, will face significant challenges. The COVID-19 pandemic and the rare disparities and inequities that it starkly revealed offer a sobering reminder. Other contemporary issues include escalating healthcare costs, obstacles to access, social determinants of health, aging population, poverty, and the effects of climate change. And undoubtedly, new and unanticipated challenges will arise. Do not shy away from challenges. Remember that you are empowered to affect change by virtue of your identity, and that you have a responsibility to do so, to impact human health for social good. As Gandhi would say, be the change that you wish to see in the world, and it will bring you great joy, fulfillment, and happiness. I wish each and every one of you all the very best in your endeavors. Congratulations again, class of 2023.
Good morning, everybody, and welcome. I'm delighted to introduce the faculty speaker selected by the MD class of 2023, Dr. Steve Brugis. I want to take a few moments for the friends and family in the crowd to describe the impact that Dr. Brugis has had on our class. In addition to being a practicing emergency medicine physician, he has been deeply involved in our education as the director of the doctoring program here at Brown, a four-year curriculum focused on the development of patient-centered clinical skills. The enthusiasm, intention, and sense of humanism Dr. Rugas has brought to this role has helped to shape each of our individual clinical personalities and professional identities, and deeply influenced the way that we interact with patients. In our clinical years, many of us experienced how what we learned in doctoring is not always or even often the way medicine is practiced in the real world. Our healthcare system is facing many challenges with sometimes result in a lack of time for human connection and a lack of emphasis on the patient experience. Some of us may even have felt pressure in clinical spaces to adopt some of these less than ideal practices and attitudes to do what is easy rather than what is right. But Dr. Rugas exemplifies what it means to choose what is right over what is easy. He practices medicine the way that he teaches, leading with compassion, humanism, no matter the situation. As we start our training as brand new doctors across specialties and across states, this is Dr. Rugas' gift to us and to our future patients. Teaching us to always center our patients and their needs to the best of our ability, even when it is hard. To practice medicine with integrity and with humanity, and to support each other in the process. Today we thank Dr. Rugas for helping each of us craft a vision of the kind of physician we want to be and for being there every step of the way as we realize those visions. Though I'm terrified to be starting residency, excited but terrified, which is a feeling I imagine many of us share, I find comfort in the knowledge that there will be a whole new class of doctors across the country who, when faced with difficult situations, will be asking ourselves, what would Steve Rugas do? <laughs> the answer, the right thing, and we will do the same. Please join me in welcoming and thanking Dr. Steve Rugas. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Sarah, for such a beautiful, very heartfelt introduction. And thank you to the class of 2023 for the privilege of being able to speak to you among my friends and colleagues in the faculty and administration, and importantly, in front of your friends, families, and loved ones. I have shared with many of you that participating in your education is among the greatest honors of my life. And I come to you today with a heart full of gratitude and respect. I hope that together, we can bring the reflections and the moments of your medical school journey to the forefront of your mind today, to remind you where you came from, who you have become, and who you will be going forward. To start, I'd like you to close your eyes for a moment if you can, and imagine this scenario. You are standing in front of a closed door. <laughs> Nerve, you know where it's going already. <laughs> nervous, anxious, not sure what lies behind it. There are a mix of emotions. Can I do this? Do I belong here? Is this what I've really been waiting for? And then, slowly, you sense the growing anticipation around you. A gentle hiss comes overhead. <laughs> and suddenly, the scene begins to come to life and you hear that voice announcing those words you were waiting to hear. <laughs> learners, you may begin. <laughs> For all my learners, you know exactly what I'm talking about, the infamous OSCE. OSCEs are the exams in medical school where students practice in a simulated exam room with a simulated patient who is trained to portray a specific case. Students use OSCEs to practice and receive feedback on some of their most vital clinical skills like communication, listening, empathy, and professionalism, all in preparation for the future patient care that they will provide. Most of my role as an educator is supporting and preparing students to successfully complete their OSCEs. 
Well, students, you have your wish. This is my ASCII for you. <laughs> and yes, you may count the number of ums I make and whether I make direct eye contact and connect with you. <laughs> Though you have heard this phrase, learners, you may begin at the beginning of most every ASCII while at Alper Medical School. Have you ever paused to ask yourself what it really means? This phrase is your entry into a world unknown. It's an invitation into a patient's life, their pain, triumphs, frustrations, and worry. There is a reason why we teach you the importance of the patient's story as one of the first skills that you learn in medical school. Understanding someone's story can change their lives, and sometimes ours along with it. Patient stories are complex, they're intersectional, and they are messy. They don't present like the books because the books never really understood the full picture of someone's story. But we also have complex, intersectional, and messy lives. That interplay between the stories of our lives and our patients' lives is more important than you realize in developing your professional identity as a practicing provider sometimes even more important than the medical management you learned in a textbook. Our stories are our lenses into this complex and messy world. We cannot understand that which we strive to become if we do not understand where we have been and why. So what does my own complex and messy story look like? It begins like this. I am a first-generation college student, the first physician in my family. I was born to my parents, Gus and Kula Rugas, in Providence. Both my parents were orphaned at a young age. My father was born the son of Greek immigrants, and my mother is a Greek immigrant who came here as a young adult. She was taken in by an orphanage for Greek immigrants who offered a teacher certification program. Her first teaching placement was here in Rhode Island, where she has worked as a Greek afternoon language teacher for over 50 years. Together with my father, who owned a local diner, they raised three sons, of which I am the youngest. Like many communities, the center of our Greek community was our church life. We gathered for church on Sundays and spent time celebrating events and holidays. Because we did not have a lot of family in Rhode Island, my parents sacrificed immensely for us, as many parents do, and worked hard to develop close bonds with extended friends who eventually became our family. Growing up, I never realized just how unique my situation was because I grew up really happy, never feeling empty or as if I had been held back in any way. My parents' complex, intersectional, and messy story had a purpose, to support their sons so that we would not have to experience the hardships they did along their journey. So as you might imagine, when I was in high school and applied for and was not accepted to several colleges, I remember how devastating it was for my parents. And now, as a parent myself, I really understand it. And yet, despite not every door opening for me when maybe I had expected it to, I was determined to not let their story end there. I eventually found my way to Brown through the Early Identification Program, which admitted students to the medical school from local Rhode Island schools. I was fortunate that someone took a chance on me and showed me generosity, uplifting a local, first-generation, low-income son of immigrants. Six years after that, I stood in this very church with my family watching as I received my medical diploma. It was a full-circle moment that will forever stay with me, and now defines my complex and messy story. And do you want to know the first thing my mother said to me when we embraced outside of this very church? She looked at me lovingly, yet sternly, and said, you may now have a medical degree, but I have a diploma in life. Never forget who you are and what got you here. So please, I want you to take a moment right now and ask yourself, what got you here? Who are the people that are most important to your story and how it has evolved? I suspect that some of those individuals are in this room. And I want you to look, find them right now, connect with them, find them in the audience, bring them to mind, even if they are not here for any reason, whether they are not able to join or no longer with us, please bring them to mind. And as you do, 
recognize that the immense amount of pride, accomplishment, and love that you feel in your heart on this day as a student graduating from Alpert Medical School, that feeling is triple in their hearts as they watch you graduate because part of their story helped bring you to this point in your journey. So be sure to take some time to show them gratitude and reflect on how their stories have played a role in what you have become. I'd like you to give them a round of applause right now. It's okay to wipe away some of those tears, it's okay. <laughs> so where do our messy and complex stories go after today? You have closed this chapter at Alpert Medical School with some incredible accomplishments, with grit and with determination. What happens next in your story, however, will not just impact you. It will impact the patients you are entrusted to care for, their families, and ultimately, their stories. Your focus will shift from grades and OSCEs and exams to improving the health and well-being of our society. This is no small burden, but it has great purpose. So let today be your call to action for something larger, more barrier to successful human flourishing. Human flourishing is why you learn pathophysiology, pharmacology, communication, and empathy. It is why you spent hours studying, practicing, and participating in direct patient care. But you cannot help others to flourish if you are not in pursuit of your own human flourishing. We are obligated, as a profession, to engage in a social contract where we are responsible for caring for one another. To engage in a social contract where we are responsible for caring for one another as providers. Who was there? What about that moment gave you clarity and made you feel whole? Where your meaning, your purpose, your character, they were all clear. I want you to take that moment, share it with someone today, and frame that in your mind. Take it forward with you as you go into residency. Reference it regularly when you feel as though your story may not be going in the direction that you would like. Find those things that make you whole, hold on to them tight, and make them a vibrant part of your story's next, cha next chapter. Because you will find yourself, like in that opening scenario, standing in front of many closed doors, not knowing what lies on the other side, wondering if you are ready. And as those scenes come to life and that voice announces the beginning of whatever you are about to face, don't forget, look behind you, look back, and then take a step forward. Look back at the complex and messy stories and the journey that led you to this point. Give gratitude for the people and the experiences that have shaped you. And then, with clarity of purpose and those moments of wholeness framed in your mind, Take a step forward toward the pursuit of human flourishing in this profession that you are now proudly entering. And please know that you are ready. And in case you had any doubt, in case you were unsure, I can say to you one last time, with an immense amount of gratitude in my heart, as you embark on this next phase of your journey, learners, you may now begin. Congratulations. to celebration today. The theme is also reflection. For the world of 2019 or before, when we may have entered, simply no longer exists. Needless to say, a lot has changed over the last four years, and yet 
here we are. Broken, battered, and blue, maybe, but here we are. We've endured. And we've chosen someone. A man who represents the best of us, collectively and as individuals, to speak on our behalf today. I met John Johnson early in first year. Here at Brown, people who are truly from the Deep South, that is, born, and raised, and gone to college in the Deep South, are hard to find. But every time I say this, people bring it up, so I want to make it clear. Florida, that doesn't include you. <laughs> we, yeah. we tend to stick out a little bit and immediately have a collective bond among each other. This happened with me being from Rome, Georgia, and John being from Greenville, Mississippi. Over the last four years, John and I have developed a strong bond where we would commiserate on difficult medical theories, console each other in hardships throughout the clerkship years, and discuss topics in earnest, ranging from photography, at which I would be remiss if I did not mention that John is brilliantly talented at photography, to Manhattan fish in the Providence River, to race in America, the various means and ways one holds privilege and how surprised we both were at the similarities between the North and the South in which manners of discrimination persist. We would meet, crossing paths and hallways or the gym, where we would be invariably late to wherever we were headed, or turn a 30 to 45 minute workout into at least twice that amount. We would get lunch, share a drink. Hours would pass without our notice. Because of John, I have grown as a person to be increasingly able to recognize where there is hurt in the world and where I can use my privileges outside of being a physician to help alleviate that hurt. When John asked me to introduce him today, I was, and John still am, so honored. Pondering and questioning the realities of the world together, I know that I would not have grown to be the person and about to be newly minted physician I am today without John. And I think much can similarly be said for our class as a whole. After that conversation, though, my mind began to swim. How could I sufficiently make an introduction today for this man? How could I state that John demonstrates both visible excellence and humble wisdom? Should I even mention that he's going to Harvard's Mass Gen for anesthesiology? As you might imagine, I was pretty stressed. I felt I needed an impressive array of obscure words and phrases woven together in an even more complicated constellation, you know, this, this is the Ivy League, in order to rise to the occasion. But then, in the calm of the night, it hit me. John is genuine. He does not portend any false prides, fake attitudes. I knew exactly how to describe him then. Just one simple word. Good. John Johnson is a good man in all aspects of the word, and thus, I'm so thrilled to turn this podium over and introduce my classmate, my friend, and my brother, John Johnson. trying to make me cry before I got to give this speech. <laughs> um, good morning. I'm John Johnson, a graduating medical student. I want to begin by expressing gratitude. First, thank you to my class for choosing me to speak today. Being chosen by a group of such compassionate and thoughtful people is a tremendous honor that is not lost on me. I'd also like to thank the deans and administration for your unwavering support and persistent attention throughout our time here at Warren Alpert Medical School. And lastly, a major thank you to the friends, family, mentors, and all other loved ones who have supported each of us in our journey to becoming physicians. The road to becoming a doctor is one that requires a community effort. So on behalf of the entire class of MD23, thank you for being our community. Y'all, I got to tell you this story. <laughs> I recently went back home to Mississippi. I was walking into a clothing store with my parents, and we saw a daughter holding her mother's arms, trying to keep her from falling. My mama yelled out, 
John, get her. <laughs> so I ran up behind the woman and hooked my arms under hers. My parents ran over too, and we all eased her to the ground. The woman said she was feeling lightheaded, so I told her, ma'am, we need to lie you down flat. I asked her if she could tell me her name, if she knew what she was. Had this ever happened before? What medication she took? <laughs> <laughs> and in the back of my mind, it hit me. Oh my God. I'm a doctor. <laughs> what naturally accompanies the new responsibility of having patients under your care. And that leads me to the second reason I wanted to share this story. We should not try to carry this responsibility alone. Just a little bit of background. My dad is a registered respiratory therapist, and my mom is a registered nurse. <laughs> When we told the lady who we were, she said, you see, who initially recognized that something was going wrong, and she was the one who ensured that this woman was comfortable. My dad, the respiratory therapist, served a vital purpose because he recognized that she should not be given water because of the risk for aspiration, which is very much a catch that could have saved this woman's life. While each of us served our distinct roles and had our own considerations, we were all essential in providing the best care possible to help this person. And I know that this is somewhat of a simplistic representation because our roles as physicians can and often do overlap with those of other careers. But the principle of working together as a team, ultimately in the service of patients, is fundamental. The last reason I wanted to share this story is because I believe it helps exemplify something I call learning loosely. Within academics, we conventionally define an education within a rigid structure. Lectures given with stated objectives, article reviews and presentations, board exam preparation, so on and so forth. While acquiring knowledge in this way helps to ensure a standard for patient care broadly, there is so much to be learned outside of that structure. And this is where I find the term learning loosely. Loosely defining what an education is, loosely defining who our educators are assistants, nurse practitioners, I see learning loosely as a way of recognizing the value of our everyday situations and allowing everyone around you to have a role in your education. But just as we will be learning from others, others will be learning from us. And this is one of the constant struggles in medicine. We teach while we are still learning. We are role models as we are still modeling ourselves. The duty of a physician is a tall order, but it is an order that I am assured we all can fulfill. Over my time here at AMS, I've been fortunate enough to be classmates with some of the brightest minds and most purposeful listeners I've met. Whether I've told you or not, each one of you, and I look through our class group me, I do mean every single one of you, <laughs> have inspired me at one point or another to be a better doctor, and more importantly, to be a better person. And I don't want these to just be passing words. So I want to exemplify this by spotlighting random moments during my time here when I was personally inspired by some of my classmates. The first people I wanted to mention are Stana Nikolic and Lily Gordon. We had this conference for internal medicine where we were given this complicated patient case. And all the students had to try to figure out what was going on with the patient. And the students and the students with the most well thought out diagnosis were chosen to present in front of everyone. Stana and Lily were two of the people chosen for this conference, and the breakdown that they gave for the patient's history, physical exam, and labs was truly remarkable. I remember sitting in that conference and thinking, they're like you were explanations. How do they know all this information? <laughs> but to this day, that instance inspires me to be thoughtful and meticulous when I'm caring for patients. Another example from our class is Lydia. <laughs> Lydia is one of the best listeners I've met in my life. Lydia will bring up information you told her five years ago <laughs> and related to how you've grown as a person. She's one of those people who doesn't listen just to respond. 
She listens because she cares. And I am inspired by her to listen more, both when I'm interacting with patients and also in my everyday life. <laughs> this next person, I'm sure, really was not expecting me to say his name, because I don't think we've had two conversations. <laughs> but Aaron Litched. In one of our second year doctoring small groups, we were learning how to mediate difficult family interactions. And AMS brought in standardized patients for this session. Aaron volunteered to go first and attempt to mediate. And we had particularly good actors on this day. I mean, it was intense. There were awkward silences and everything. And all I could think was, I am glad I was not chosen for this. But Aaron mediated this interaction masterfully. He facilitated a space where each family member was able to give their perspective. Every person felt heard. And they were ultimately able to come to a resolution. I carry this interaction with me still and plan to use it as a guide when I encounter tense patient family dynamics in the future. And finally, I'd also like to mention my fellow Tougaluans, Aja Clayton and Naila Tucker. <laughs> I've known you both for nearly eight years, so there are far too many examples for me to name where I've learned from you. But watching you constantly overcome adversity and seize opportunities is an unending well of inspiration for me. I'm fortunate to have taken this journey with you both. I'm immensely proud, and I'm so excited to see what you will accomplish. If time permitted, I could and would give an example like that for every one of you graduating with me today. And don't get me wrong, I'm ready to graduate. <laughs> I've done my time. <laughs> but I don't want to leave y'all. I can honestly say that I'm a better person for knowing each one of you. But the light that you all hold is a light that needs to be shared. So with that being said, I'll end my speech with what my hopes are for all of us once we enter residency. As physicians, what we do and who we are can be clouded by workup, diagnosis, and treatment. But at the most basic level, we are doing all that we can the best that we can to improve the human condition. And that effort is not as clean and neat as it sounds once in practice. A call to task like that causes one to reach at their extremes. This duty calls for an incredible duality. I hope in residency we can continue to strike that balance, to be knowledgeable enough to lead, but modest enough to be led, to be confident enough to speak but thoughtful enough to listen, to be selfless enough to be there for others, but introspective enough to be there for ourselves, to be proud enough to maintain our character, but humble enough to grow. In short, as we graduate from medical school and transition from classmate to colleague, I hope that we become even more so of who we already are. Thank you. Graduates, please stand. It is true.
traditional that those about to enter the profession of medicine take an oath before their peers, their faculty, and their families, pledging themselves to certain ethical principles of commitment and professional behavior. This particular oath was written by the MD class of 1975 and has been used by each succeeding class. Please repeat after me. Now being admitted to the high calling of the physician, I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the care of the sick. The promotion of health and the service of humanity. In the spirit of those who have inspired and taught me, I will seek constantly to grow in knowledge, understanding, and skill. And will work with my colleagues to promote all that is worthy. In the ancient and honorable profession of medicine. The health and dignity of my patient will ever be my first concern. I will hold in confidence all that my patient relates to me. I will not permit consideration of race, gender, sexual orientation, religion, nationality, or social standing. to come between me and my duty to anyone in need of my services. This pledge I make freely and upon my honor. Please be seated. Good morning, everyone. MD class of 2023, let's confirm some degrees. Sokii honorana, omnes quos ad graduum doctoris medicinae idoneos comparamus, wobis presentamos et eros et hoc graduum promovere liciat rogamus. Candidate doctorus medicinae exenda. Aturatate mihi comisa vos ad graduum doctorus medicinae et mito omiaque Cura ad pluviragia, ad hunc graduum preverentia vobus concedo, quare in testimonium hac diplomata vobis solmenter trarum. Tatiana Abrantes. <laughs> Lydia Ademuagu. Fedwa 
Ahmed. Alyssa Aldrich. Anthony Arcis. Kobe Axelrod. Switcha Benskota. Robert Barno. Brooke Barrow. Catherine Barry. <laughs> Stephen Beswick Bozier. Anne Bocage. <laughs> Jonathan Bowler. Peter Brodeur. <laughs> Juliana Brown. Kelsey Brown. <laughs> Dorothy Bune. Ken Cow. <laughs> Tess Sersonsky.
Edward Chen. Isabel Chen. <laughs> Daniel Cho. Jihei Choi. <laughs> Carlin Chuck. Aja Clayton. <laughs> Natalie Correa. Natalie Cortinas. <laughs> Kyle Curtis. Imshan Drolia. William Doak. <laughs> Dominique Dockery. Audra Fane. <laughs> Anthony Formicola. Tia Forsman. <laughs> Jordan Fox.
Benjamin Cayo Marin. Orlando Garcia. Stephen Garden. Georgina Gimpalo. <laughs> Lily Gordon. Matthew Hagen. <laughs> Heba Halim. Casey Halsey. <laughs> Tyler Harder. Zandra Ho. <laughs> Catherine Hobbs. Jessica Hoffen. <laughs> Ryan Hoops. Here, Johnson. <laughs> Sanjana Kalagara. Layla Kazemi. <laughs> Brendan Kelly.
Sophia Kerman. <laughs> Emma Kanapka. Cicely Crable. <laughs> Michael Kwok. Ayelet Labar. Peter Loro. Katya Levine. <laughs> Julia Lerner. Jane Lindahl. <laughs> Dylan Markey. Winston McCormick. Giancarlo Medina Perez. Jordan Meltzer. <laughs> Samuel Mickle. Rachel Montoya.
Devin Morris. James Mullen. <laughs> Idara Nudon. Sana Nikolic. <laughs> Jamie Odzer. Rocio Oliva. <laughs> Matias Page. Scott Pardo. <laughs> Hannah Pfeiffer. Dana Fan. <laughs> Ronald Phillips the third. Yuri Pierre Louis. Mauricio Pinto. <laughs> Rafaela Posner. Shreya Ramaya. (laughs) 
Abigail Rayner. Neha Reddy. Gabriella Sansarique. Victoria Schulte. <laughs> Sahar Shahamadar. Sylvian Sherman. <laughs> Ethan Snow. Sophia Song. <laughs> Jonathan Spiegel. Michael Stevens. <laughs> Daniel Strauss. Oliver Tang. <laughs> Jenny Tai. Anastasia Tillman.
Conrad Wallet. Lanbo Yang. <laughs> Sir, I wish to report that 10 students have completed their degree requirements and have permission to receive their degree in absentia. Camille Bahit. <laughs> Kevin Chen. Jocelyn Chung. Gregory Cohen. Hello and congratulations to everybody. On behalf of the class of recognizes the role you have played in shaping our careers, you are a role model to each and every one of us. I hope that you send down your vigilance and guidance upon this new beginning of theirs as doctors of the healing arts 